Morning, Tesla Tom here. Thank you so much for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. In this video, I'll be taking a road trip from Sydney to Canberra and return in my 2023 black rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3 with an LFP battery. Come join us. Okie dokie, so I have reset my trip computer. So I've got here Sydney, Canberra, Sydney, and I've just driven two kilometers from home. And uh, looking at the stats from birth, which is when I picked up the car from delivery about, let's see, uh, April to August, so that's about four months now. Uh, efficiency 140 watt hours per kilometer. I've driven 4,756 kilometers. And I also use this setup here, which is uh, the Test Logic uh, dashboard mount using a smartphone to uh, have a speedometer here and other telemetry as well. You can also flick between different things like that. You can give you uh, the power distribution there and also uh, some other metrics as well, like G-Force, battery temperature, all those kind of things. You can also uh, navigate using this system as well. And you can also see the uh, car's details too. So this is a Model 3 Standard Plus, or you know the rear-wheel drive variant with LFP battery. Uh, birthday, 17th of March, 2023 from Shanghai Gigafactory. And yeah, let's see. Uh, other stats so uh, hardware 3 autopilot computer boom box installed and 1% uh, degradation apparently according to this system uh, 60 kilowatt hours capacity when new currently max available 59.9 2.7 kilowatt hours as a buffer and uh, I have DC charged 33% of the time and I've saved 37% with regen uh, braking. That's the lifetime efficiency, which is very similar to the uh, since birth efficiency there, 140 watt hours per kilometer. So that's pretty accurate. And I've consumed 5.7 kilowatt hours per day. So that's sort of all good metrics there. And then we'll just put it back to the speedometer right there. All right, let's uh, head off on our drive. And as you can see, I am setting off on this journey with a 90% state of charge. And if I plug in the Canberra supercharger there, it is telling me to actually stop in Goulburn on the way uh, so that I can reach there with 30%, top up for 10 minutes, and then safely make it to Canberra with 12%. But instead, what I might do today is stop at the Exeter supercharger or Sally's Corner, uh, because that is uh, where I want to check out a new Tesla supercharger location, which I've not been to before and then we can show you what it's like around the area because we've been to Goulburn a few times already, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, so we are on the uh, M31 or the Hume Highway now. Uh, we're finally out of Sydney. Uh, I know a few hours have passed. I actually went to work this morning for a few hours and uh, yeah, on our way now to Canberra. Um, just give you some of the uh, settings that I've currently got the car on so you can see what we're doing. So I'm using auto steer at the moment, which is the basic autopilot that's included with the vehicle. Um, no offset for speed control. And yeah, late forward collision warning, late departure avoidance. And I've currently got it on standard acceleration and just standard steering for now. I've got the air conditioning running, so I'm not compromising on that. And I should just close now that I'm actually driving to Canberra for the next 24 hours. I'll be there for the next 24 hours because uh, Polestar has kindly invited me to come along to their event in Canberra. Uh, full details will be in a separate video for the Polestar event for the next 24 hours. So make sure you watch that video as well, which will drop shortly after this one. Um, but yeah, this video will focus primarily on the road trip to Canberra in the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive and also on the journey back as well, focusing on the stats, uh, efficiency, all that stuff. Now, you're probably wondering why am I stopping at Exeter? Do I even need to stop at all? Uh, I'm sure there'll be a comment from someone or, uh, you know, someone who's driving petrol at the moment going, well, I don't need to stop. Well, that's true. Uh, even in this Model 3, I don't need to stop. And I've certainly proven that before in our Tesla Model Y from Sydney to Canberra. So I watched that video too uh, earlier this year. We left Sydney with 100%, fully loaded with suitcases, family of four, and we made it to Canberra without stopping in Goulburn or Exeter. So uh, it can be done. And that Model Y has got the same battery pack as this Model 3. And in fact, this Model 3 is more efficient. We've proven that with a Gold Coast trip than the Model Y. So it can be done. 
Uh, you should know too that driving out of Sydney, because Sydney is at sea level, uh, elevation does matter with any vehicle you drive, but obviously particularly with an EV because range does matter. So uh, anything out of Sydney will, will be less efficient than driving back into Sydney, but obviously it will even out between the two. So if you really don't want to stop, it's possible to do so in the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y2 rear-wheel drive, which is the base model for both vehicles. Very much possible. All right, so uh, yeah, our first stop will be uh, Sutton's Forest uh, or Exeter. That's where the new Tesla superchargers are. So I'm stopping there for two reasons. Uh, one, to show you guys the new supercharger location. I'm also interested as well because I've never stopped there before. And two, because yeah, it's kind of lunchtime now. I'm getting hungry and uh, my bladder range is only so much. So I can't generally last the whole trip uh, without having to stop. So I, I assume most of you are similar as well. You probably need to stop somewhere for a little break. And, you know, most motoring associations will recommend that you stop every two hours for your safety, for the safety of your occupants, and for the safety of other drivers on the road as well. So our peak bodies do recommend that. If anyone tells you they don't need to stop in their petrol vehicle, well, just quote them that statistic that a lot of fatalities happen because people are fatigued on our roads. So I think driving an EV is far more sensible, uh, safer as well for you from that point of view. Okay, so um, according to the trip computer and another benefit of driving Tesla is that the trip computer, the nav, uh, route planning is just amazing. Uh, it integrates the battery management system with the, route, uh, with the um, navigation. So you know exactly you know, where you're going, how much charge you need, all that stuff, which a lot of other vehicles don't have. I've driven a lot of EVs. I must say, Polestar is actually one of them that has uh, trip planning or route planning, integrating the battery state of charge, which is so important, obviously, if you're driving an EV. Yeah, so I've plugged in uh, Exeter Supercharger. As we get closer, we, it'll start to uh, precondition the battery as well so that it's optimal temperature for charging, so you don't have to spend too long charging the battery. And it tells me that it'll arrive, well, the car will arrive at 1.58 p.m. It'll take another 52 minutes from where I am right now, another 88 kilometers. I'll reach Exeter with 50% 50 50 state of charge. And just for those who don't know the, the journey, Sydney to Canberra is actually quite uh, quite a frequented route on the east coast of Australia. A lot of people do that journey for work, for pleasure, uh, every day. Uh, so it's an important route on our, on our um, highways. And the distance is about 300 kilometers, depending on where you leave or arrive. Sydney, Sydney's quite a big city, so it can be greater than 300 kilometers if you drive you know, somewhere in the north or south of Sydney. If you sort of leave from central Sydney uh, or southwestern Sydney, then uh, it's a lot closer as well. Okay, so that's uh, a few thoughts on uh, the trip planning. I will see you all in uh, Sutton's Forest very shortly. But as you can see currently, that's my setup. I've got trip computer. I've got it on auto steer at the moment. Uh, I've got my ways on my screen here on my device. I've got the test logic um, mount, dashboard mount with the speedometer as well. So that's a nice clear metric speedometer is right in front of me behind the steering wheel. It also shows you the range in kilometers as well as I've got, I've got my percentage, percentage here as well, which you can also toggle by just pressing it. So you've got 307 kilometers apparently left at the way I'm driving at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's my setup. So yeah, I will see you all very shortly in Sutton's Forest or Exeter. Okay, so just a little note on overtaking. So I've just got basic autopilot on at the moment, right? Uh, if you've got enhanced autopilot or full self-driving capability, you can actually overtake automatically and the car will overtake for you. But to overtake in basic autopilot, you just indicate right, and the autopilot will automatically disengage by itself, leaving you on adaptive cruise control. In this situation, you can then, if you're in the overtaking lane, go back to autopilot like this, and you'll be just fine. However, I do recommend doing this if you are passing a big truck like these trucks in front of me, particularly a big tanker like that, is to just take it off when you're doing this, a big truck, because I found that in the past, some phantom braking does occur when you pass big trucks, particularly if you're going at a very similar speed limit to them or just a bit faster. For some reason, it literally jumps at shadows and then it'll just phantom brake and that's potentially dangerous if there's a car behind you. So that 
you know, people talk about phantom braking in a Tesla. Yes, it does happen. I find that it does happen, particularly when you're passing a big truck like this. So you can either just use your foot and accelerate just a little bit more, maybe five Ks and over, just to get past the trucks like this, or you can roll your wheel up and then just uh, have it on autopilot. And particularly in this situation where that truck's merging like that, right, you just gotta be very careful because you don't want that truck to uh, sideswipe you or, or drive into you. That would be an absolute disaster. So yeah, just a word of caution on overtaking with autopilot. Uh, either go a bit, pump your accelerator a bit faster or just roll the wheel up to go faster than the truck. Like what I'm doing right now. Okay, so here's another example. I'm now being sandwiched by that truck. This truck merging left. I don't want to get rock chips, so hopefully yes. I'm past now, good. And again, just pump up a little bit faster. Go to 115, let's say. Then when I'm clear, then I'll just merge back in. Again, autopilot disengages, and then back to adaptive cruise control. When it's safe to do so, back into autopilot in this left lane. And if you've got if you've got enhanced autopilot, even with auto lane change, um, I would still pump the accelerator or just roll up just to go a bit faster because I've seen when we used to have enhanced autopilot it does phantom brake going past big trucks like that. So just a little pro tip there if you're driving an autopilot on the highway in a Tesla. Okay, so um, just on my left here, which I'm not gonna stop at, is the Ampol Amcharge uh, DC chargers. There's one southbound and northbound on the other side. There's uh, at least nine plugs, six charging stops. So there's another good option there if you wanna stop uh, at a non-Tesla supercharger, or if you're a non-Tesla EV, that's a good place to stop. Good service center as well very uh, new, clean, modern facilities. Um, so yeah, it's open 24 hours a day, that's a good one. Um, so I'm very happy in 2023, uh, in August, that there are actually quite a few stops now. There's that one, there's you know some BP stops, there's one at Marilan. Uh, there's one obviously at uh, Exeter, which we're going to, which has got non-Tesla DC fast chargers as well as Tesla superchargers now. And Goulburn, of course, good old Goulburn with the uh, superchargers and the one at the petrol station with the charge fox ones and there's a new one coming to Goulburn KFC South as well which is the tritium uh, DC fast chargers so lots to look forward to not so much between Goulburn and Canberra I think there's not many big towns anyway in between uh, those two stops so anyway there's not much there's there's a short distance between Goulburn and Canberra so that's not too much of a problem but certainly great to see more stops along the way from Sydney to Canberra in terms of DC fast charging options Okay, so we're getting pretty close to uh, the Exeter Tesla supercharger and more importantly getting close to lunch. And I'll just share some stats with you as we turn off here. So 36.1% um, 36 consumed, which is 4.5% less than trip projection, which is great. 26.7% was from driving. Uh, climate 0.9%, which is minus 1.2% less than thought what we thought. Battery conditioning 1.1% which is 2.4% uh, less than expected. Let's turn off here. Uh, elevation, 0.9% worse than predicted and everything else, 1.4% uh, of the battery. So there you go, we're pretty much in the green. And I'll just keep driving here as we uh, pull into the supercharger and it's actually next to the Heather Bray Pies, which I think we'll stop to get some lunch as well today. Efficiency wise, uh, 165 kilometers and the efficiency was 154 watt hours per kilometer overall. 25 kilowatt hours used, which is a bit worse than the from birth number, 141. So as expected, uh, not as efficient to get out of Sydney because of the elevation required. All right, so there are the stalls in front of us there. We've got six stalls. There's one sort of on the left side, I guess for trailers, you can sort of drive in like that. Not pull through, unfortunately. Uh, that's okay. Hopefully one day we'll see more pull through or drive through charges. I will take this one on the left here. And I'll drive into the ones marked Tesla because the charge port is on the left, back left. And you'll see in a second how easy it is to uh, plug into a Tesla supercharger. Ooh, this one's quite tight, isn't it? They're all getting pretty tight because they need to be uh, compatible with non-Tesla vehicles one day. So you can't have the wheel backstop anymore. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna plug in and then I'm going to see what's available at Heatherbray Pies. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in 
to the Tesla supercharger. Now this is a V3 plug, there's only one plug, if it's V2 there's two. Might uh, have to reach in through here, just pass to my other hand. And to open the charge port, just press this button here on the plug. That opens up. So that's a CCS2 connector. So hold it by the handle and literally just plug in. I'll tell you what, nothing beats a Tesla supercharger experience. You'll see very shortly it's going green. There it is, it's already gone green. And I heard a click as well at the Tesla uh, unit. So there we go, six uh, chargers just next to the Heather Road Pies, which I'm going to go in there very shortly to get some lunch. Did you hear it whirring already? At least it's starting up. Let's go check the car. Okay, so I shouldn't need to stay too long here at uh, Exeter. Uh, it says 30 minutes remaining, but that's to get to 100%, right? Um, I'm probably going to charge to maybe 80%, and that should be enough for me to get to the Canberra supercharger. And then <laughs> it gives you some uh, uh, suggestions here. Watch while you wait. Stream your favorite content in the theater. Um, and the pricing at the moment at Exeter is 63 cents per kilowatt hour, and we'll find out exactly how much it costs us very shortly. And if you want to find out exactly how much you need to charge to get to Canberra, all you need to do is just uh, plug in the Canberra supercharger, which is 122 kilometers away. And it's telling me that, let's see, if I don't charge anything at all right now, it'll get me to Canberra at 24%. So there you go, there's evidence right there that you don't actually need to charge from Sydney. I, was, I left Sydney with 90% state of charge from home, right? I will reach Canberra with 24%, even if I stop charging right now. So there's evidence right there already, which is great. But obviously for my stomach and for my bladder, I'm going to stop for lunch. Oh, that's my lunch right now. Pie, yeah, so coffee, nice here at Heatherbury Pies. Very comfortable location. So come and check them out. Yeah, it's seriously amazing how fast the V3 charges uh, charge. I've been in there in the Heatherbury Pies for less than 20 minutes, I reckon, just to pee and then to get something to eat, as you saw. And it's already up to 90%, so I've got more than enough to get me to Canberra. No problem at all. I'll get there with 64% state of charge left. Easy. So I'm going to unplug very shortly and get on my way. Okay, so I'm plugging, which is just literally pushing this button here. That stops the charge. Pull out. And then hang it back into the cradle there. Done. And the charge port closes by itself. How easy is that? Okay, so away we go. So yeah, very quick charging session. Um, you know, barely enough time to do what I needed to do, honestly, with those V3 chargers. So the Heather Bray Pies is open 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Not too bad, really. Not 24 hours, I know, but pretty good, you know, during sort of daylight hours anyway. Um, nice, clean facilities. Uh, quite cute with a little, uh, you know, old time truck in there. Uh, good pies. Yeah, friendly staff. Highly recommend you guys come and check it out before you uh, head on your way. Um, and it's a fairly safe location. I think it's pretty well lit, if need be. I guess after hours, you might be a little bit concerned if that Heather Bray's pie shop is shut, in which case you might want to go to the opposite side, which is the uh, Sutton's Forest West <clears throat> with the non-Tesla DC fast chargers. At least there's a McDonald's close by, very close by. Otherwise, over here, you know, it's not too bad. There's McDonald's here. There's a service station as well if you need a bathroom, or, uh, or McDonald's has it too, uh, you know, after hours. That's 24 hours here on my left. And if you need to pump your tyres or clean your windscreen or whatever, uh, the petrol station's nearby. So it's good. Good to see more charging facilities here in uh, on the Hume Highway. Okay, so uh, back on the freeway now. I've got my coffee, I've got my chips, I've got my water, and I am happy as. so. We'll touch base very shortly uh, and I will sign off once I get back on the freeway, engage autopilot, then we'll touch base when we get back to Canberra. So here we go, so driving up to 110, merging at speed of course, that's the safe way to do it, that way you're not cutting anyone off or making people slow down unnecessarily. Okay, to engage autopilot, right stalk, double tap. Double tap halfway and you are at 110 and that is it, that's easy. Um, I didn't actually see how much the charging session cost. Um, I didn't see it unfortunately, but I can probably estimate it for you based on the price per kilowatt hour. I'll have a look at my stats later. And as always, I'll add my stats to the uh, ludicrous road trips spreadsheet, which you can check it out in the video description below. 
and yeah, all my stats will be available for you. And a quick note about idle fees too, if you have more than 50% of the stalls taken up, so for example, there are six stalls there, ooh, roadkill, um, if there are, oh, was that a wombat? Oh my goodness, it looked like a wombat, didn't look like a kangaroo, poor thing. Um, if there are six stalls, then if there are more than 50% 50, 50 stalls taken, so let's say there are three or more stalls taken up with cars, and you go over your limit, so let's say you stay more than five minutes, which is the threshold, which, which is the grace period. If you stay more than five minutes over uh, once the charging session has stopped, then you'll be charged idle fees at 50 cents per kilowatt hour. If all charging stalls are full, let's say all six stalls are full, and you stay more than five minutes longer than necessary, then you'll be charged one dollar per hour. Sorry, one dollar per minute and 50 cents per minute, respectively. Did I say hour? Per minute that's dollar or 50 cents per minute depending whether it's 50 percent or 100 percent taken up i think that's fair it, it encourages turnover and stops people, people from camping there all day and using it as a free charging uh, free parking spot so i think it's a good system that tesla have and i would encourage anyone watching this from third party providers to also implement that for your systems that will encourage turnover and will increase or improve reliability and improve accessibility for people on road trips who need that uh charging spot because DC fast chargers are currently a limited resource. All right, everyone, I'll see you uh, shortly on the road, if not in Canberra, so stay tuned. Okay, so on your left there, um, you'll see BP Marulan. I still can't really pronounce that, sorry. Marulan, M-A-R-U-L-A-N. Um, and there is a electric vehicle charger there as well, if you don't want to stop at Hitherbury Pies. There's one northbound and southbound too. Just an extra DC fast charging stop for our convenience, which is fantastic. All right, so it started raining and uh, yes, the auto wipers are working when it's raining, so <laughs> that's good. Uh, sometimes it does come on when it's not raining, but hey, I guess it's good that it's working when it's raining. Now, you can see Goulburn exit is coming up in two kilometers and I guess, you know, having the Exeter superchargers makes me really happy because now I can actually uh, skip Goulburn and as beautiful and historic uh, as Goulburn is, uh, with all its lovely old buildings. Um, having to go into Goulburn to stop at the superchargers next to the business center probably adds, I would say, 15 you know, to 20 minutes to your journey because you have to slow down into town. So, whereas the Exeter supercharger is like right off the highway, which from a convenience point of view is fantastic. And if you don't need to stop at Goulburn, um, then, you know, this is good. I don't need to, you know, uh, get into Goulburn and spend time there if I don't need to. Um, I've got the Exeter option now, which is great. Now I can just fly past Goulburn and then just turn off at the um, Federal Highway onward to Canberra and saving some time there. So yeah, you know, I dare say uh, Exeter is the new Goulburn because in the past, prior to Exeter opening, Goulburn was pretty much your only option. Uh, you know, from Sydney to Canberra, you had to stop at Goulburn basically when the range wasn't as good as it is now in our vehicles. So yeah, that's uh, certainly an improvement from a few years ago, doing this trip. Alright, so we are just turning onto the Federal Highway now, so we're not far from Canberra. Once I hit this highway, usually I know I'm pretty close. And it's basically now just a straight shot into Canberra. Just past Lake George, past the windmills, and we're in. So yeah, we are doing good time everyone, it's 3 o'clock. We should reach there with 55% state of charge. So it has dropped a little from what it predicted back at Exeter. Let's just have a look at the trip computer. So interestingly, it's consumed more this time than what was predicted. So uh, what has actually eaten up most of the energy? So five extra percent from driving. So this time there's an 11 kilometer an hour tailwind, sorry, headwind, okay, headwind from the north costing us 1.1% uh, this trip. So that's why it is less than what the car thought it was. Interesting, isn't it? I wonder whether it's because um, I've got aftermarket wheel covers on. I don't know. It could be. It could be another process that's not documented here. Um, as you may know, I'll show you later on as well. I, I've got uh, third-party uh, aero caps or third-party um, caps. They look good. Um, the consensus is that the aero caps that Tesla give you for rear-wheel drive cars adds another 5% of range. So whether the third party caps, which look good, they look like the arachnid wheels for, for the Model S, um, has added to the range, don't know. But then again, it was better than expected last time around from Sydney to, uh, Sydney to Exeter. So it's hard to know, isn't it? I don't, I can't give you a good answer, but certainly 
certainly the caps may be you know, uh, causing the uh, increased usage compared to uh, what was predicted. Anyway, uh, we should be pretty comfortable anyway getting into Canberra. 59% when we get to the Canberra supercharger, so we'll touch base then. Okay, so yeah, here we are, pretty much in Canberra. We're just past the ACT border, and we're on the uh, Majura Parkway, so we're not far from uh, where I need to be, which is the East Hotel, where Polestar have uh, put me up for the night. Uh, and I'll reach there with 55% state of charge. I did switch over from the uh, Canberra Supercharger to the East Hotel, knowing that I've got plenty of charge, so I'll get there first, make sure I'm not late for the event. And I might actually head out tonight to charge either at the Canberra Supercharger, which is near the IKEA, or the other one. Which I know there's two in Canberra, so I might check out the other one because I haven't been to that one yet. I've been to the, uh, the one at the airport many times. So I'll check out the new one, because tomorrow when I drive home, I want to be pretty close to 100% from Canberra. That way I can drive all the way back to Sydney uh, on one charge without having to stop, just to prove it can be done. So that's the plan. We'll see whether we can execute it. But uh, yeah, as for now, we're going to check in the East Hotel and maybe do a charge tonight. So there we are, Sydney to Canberra, uh, part one. Oh yeah, and I should let you know too that um, the efficiency for Sydney to Canberra, uh, pretty close to 300 kilometers, probably add another 13 when we get to the hotel. So 315 kilometers, efficiency of 148 watt hours per kilometer. So that's pretty good there. Uh, that's not far off from the since birth 141 watt hours per kilometer. I suspect when we go back to Sydney, when we drop down to sea level, then that efficiency should improve because as we know, it's uh, more inefficient to uh, drive from out of Sydney uh, to go somewhere. Um, and I'll just quickly look at the trip computer. So uh, I did reset it obviously to the hotel, but you can see uh, even though initially it was sort of yellow, so worse than expected, it sort of matched uh, by the time we came towards, I got into Canberra rather, it started to go more green. So that discussion about, uh, you know, aftermarket caps, I don't know how valid it is because, yeah, if, if it was really tr truly 5% loss because I've used new caps, then we should always see worsening of uh, range compared to prediction. And I'm sure we had a bit of a head, a um, bit of a tailwind there, but only saved 0.2% this trip. So yeah, hard to know. Uh, whether these aftermarket caps make a difference. Anyway, regardless, uh, we are in Canberra and we are happy. All right, everyone, I think we're pretty close to the hotel. It's called the East Hotel. There it is right in front of me right there. So um, yeah, like I said, if you want to uh, watch the part of my trip where I test drive the Polestar to update and talk about the East Hotel here, basically the whole trip in general, then yeah, uh, watch that video, but otherwise, uh, yeah, this is where we're staying tonight, and then I will continue this video if we charge tonight or when we return back to Sydney tomorrow. Many hours later. All right, so here we are at Tagrenong, and these are V3 Tesla superchargers. It's uh, pretty quiet at the moment. It's about 9.20 p.m. at night, so. Okay, so we've unhooked, and let's plug in, as always. Nothing beats the Tesla supercharger experience. Plugging in, again, yep, nice and quick, turns green. Okay, so I'm at 43% state of charge. It says 35 minutes to 100%, but I probably won't stay all the way. I'll probably go to like 90 because the hotel has kindly agreed to let me charge at one of the 240 volt outlets in the car park. So uh, yeah, we'll just go to 90 and then we'll charge the rest in the hotel for tomorrow's trip back to Sydney. And again, charging at South Point Tagunong, 63 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, so there's a reasonable signage around the charger itself, but I must say it's not that well signed coming into the car park. So you kind of have to look for it when you first drive in. And then I guess once you know where it is, you know, you know where it is. But there's no actual signage from the car park entrance, so it's hard for a first timer like me to find it. Um, and I think that's the shop entrance there. So I see a ramp just where the trolleys are. That's probably where you go in to the shops. So you see, I think one day all these V3 superchargers will be non-Tesla EV compatible as well because there's no wheel stop. Um, you can park, I suppose, which way, front, front in or back in, um, and you can still access one of the cables at least. So yeah, 
it's good to see um, they're paving the way for non-Tesla EVs to use the Tesla supercharger network as well. Okay, 90%, I think that's enough. Still going at 43 kilowatts though, not bad. Uh, but yeah, we'll top up the rest when we get to the hotel. Okay, let's unplug, push this button. Easy enough to pull out, and then just hang it back in the cradle for the next user. Okay, so my car is now plugged into one of the 240 volt sockets in the hotel basement car park. And yes, I do have permission from the hotel to charge here, so luckily for me, I can top the car to 100% tonight, and then I'll have a full charge in the morning. So happy days. Okay, so that's great news topped up to 100% overnight, which means that uh, we can head back to Sydney uh, on a full charge and we'll try not to stop, just to show you guys it can be done. Okay, so here is the Tesla app and um, it's at 100% state of charge. And I'm actually in the car at the moment with Riz driving to the Polestar event in a Polestar 2. And here you'll see a recording of my Tesla app, which is allowing me live sentry view of my car in real time and there is my car on the back of a tow truck or transporter and Polestar very kindly, well, put my car on this tow truck and drove it out to the uh, launch event for the Polestar 2. Uh, that way I didn't have to uh, drive my car to the location as well. I could leave that location and then drive back home to Sydney from there uh, without uh, having to use my car's range. So I guess that was very nice of them. Uh, but there's my Black Model 3 enjoying a ride on that tow truck. And here I am being able to watch that in real time, which is pretty funny, actually. So that's one benefit of live sentry mode. Of course, if you have someone trying to break into your car, then you can see what's happening in real time. And even try to talk to them if you really wanted to with the built-in external microphone function. Okay, everyone. So I've just finished the uh, Polestar 2 event. So like I said, watch that video for my thoughts on the Polestar 2 update. Uh, but for now, I am going to drive back to Sydney and I've just put in there the supercharger at Campbelltown, which is on the outskirts of Sydney. I want to stop there because I want to show you how important this charging stop is. Uh, for those who don't actually want to go into Sydney, you can charge on the outskirts of Sydney. Uh, and you can see my state of charge is 99%, right? And I'm going to reach Campbelltown with 43%. So let's just see how accurate that is on the way back. Um, two hours, 32 minutes, 243 kilometers. So I probably don't even need to stop at Campbelltown, but I want to stop there to show you what it's like and how you can get from all the way from Canberra to um, Sydney, or at least the outskirts of Sydney. Now, just a disclaimer, I'm not actually in Canberra. This is where I am for this launch. Uh, that's Canberra there, right? So it's, I suppose, technically... You know, not quite Canberra, but in terms of distance, it probably is. I'm just cutting across there, whereas I would have gone down to Canberra there. But uh, the nav is telling me uh, no stops between here and Campbelltown, uh, which is good. Which is, you know, pretty representative of a Canberra trip anyway, if you see. If you just use that distance to go there instead of being here. Okay, everyone. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll see you in Campbelltown. Okay, so we're about to take the exit off the freeway and uh, onto... Uh, Narellan Road to charge at the Campbelltown Supercharger. Here's some stats from the trip so far. So, uh, not too bad, pretty close to what was projected. 57.5% consumed, 2.9% more than projected. Uh, the driving component was 5.5% more than projected, probably because I drove at 110 kilometers an hour, which is the speed limit anyway, but the computer's telling me if I had driven under 110, I would have saved 1.3% of that. Uh, but a 7.3 kilometer an hour uh, tailwind saved 0.8% on this trip. Uh, climate was better than expected, uh, so was battery conditioning, and uh, yeah, elevation was worse than expected, which is, again, I find that strange, because you'd think the computer would know, right? But anyway, everything else, 2% uh, uh, of the journey. Okay, so turning right. Okay, we're gonna aim for that car park over there. You can probably see the Tesla superchargers. Okay, so into the Campbelltown car park, Campbelltown Catholic Club car park. Right, so it's telling me to turn right now. There we go. Wind the speed bumps. Now 
now your destination is on the right. Gotta say the the Tesla map's pretty good. Normally you can um, pick, uh, you know, where the, the charges are. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so I think there are ten spots here, uh, or maybe more. There's one over there, and then there's some more over here on my right. So we might do a hit count in a sec, but um, I will drive in. And charge up. Again, these are super tight because there's no wheel stop, and one day they'll be able to house non Tesla EVs as well. So, hence that's why they are on an angle. Alright, let's uh, start charging and just to let you know we're on 41% at the moment. Uh, I'll just top up a little bit, then I can get on my way. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll find the one on our left. Again, version three, just the one plug. Remove from the cradle, press the button, and pop it in. Click green, away we go, brilliant. Okay, let's do a head count. So we've got one, two, and this one's like a trailer one, even though it's not drive-through, but you can at least sort of drive up with the trailer and then unhitch maybe. And then we've got three here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oh, and the one over there as well, twelve. So that might be a bit of a drive-through one. See, that's a drive-through on the far side there. So there we go, twelve stalls here in uh, the edge of Sydney at Campbelltown. So this is one I'd recommend if you don't want to stop in Sydney, it's off. Okay, so just walking around the corner here, the Catholic clubs on my right. There's a gym over there, Aquafit. Campbelltown Convention Entertainment Center. Nice little water feature there. Bridges Hotel there. And the entrance to the Catholic Club, just there. Okay, so I probably consider this stall a drive through stall. See that? You can probably drive your trailer this way. If you're lucky enough to have both spots free, of course, behind and in front of the charger. That's nice. Look, you've got 12 Tesla superchargers. It's pretty awesome. Here in Campbelltown. Okay, so score check 68%, uh, about 25 minutes remaining. Again, I won't stay this long. I just want to top up just a little bit to get home. But uh, just a quick tip for the Campbelltown club. Uh, I was concerned that you'd have to sign in because it's a club, right? Um, but you can actually use the toilets uh, at the entrance. Uh, there's a bit of a connection to the convention center which I showed you as well as I walked around and showed you the area. So you can actually duck to the left uh, without checking in or without signing in and then use the toilets on the side. Uh, if, I guess if you want food or anything more substantial, then you have to sign in uh, because it's a club. Uh, just show your driver's license. They should normally sign you in as a guest unless you live in the area, of course, which in case you have to be a member. Um, but yeah, so pretty convenient. I think it's a pretty safe location. It's well lit. Um, certainly being a club is pretty safe in there. So yeah, not too bad. And the actual car park, park itself is actually quite well lit as well. So yeah, I think it's a good location to have Tesla superchargers. All right, everyone, that's it from me, Tesla Tom from Ludicrous Feed in my black 2023 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive with the LFP battery, doing a road trip from Sydney to Canberra and return. Um, and again, not having to charge from Canberra all the way here to Campbelltown in Sydney. And I probably could have kept, kept going home, but I just wanted to show you this location for those who need it. And uh, make sure you check my description below for all the stats from this road trip and every other road trip I've done uh, in our Teslas over the last few years. Link will be in the video description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Until the next ludicrous feed video, happy charging. All right, I made it home. So, final stats, Sydney to Canberra to Sydney and return, 681 kilometers, 97 kilowatt hours used, 143 watt hours per kilometer, just a little bit worse than the uh, from birth stats, which is 140 watt hours per kilometer. So there we are, that is the final efficiency for this journey. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, this game is stupidly addictive. Oh, the skeletons, they're, um, take more than one hit. Oh, I'm done. Nope, I got through. Ooh, got much left. Help me, Bible. Help me, Bible. I need to fire faster. Goodness, how do I survive this horde? Oh boy. Oh god. <laughs> 